<laughs> what about these here things? Uh, are they th that easy to play, Mitch? Uh, yeah, I mean, not being a keyboard player. I mean, I, I dabble with keyboards and, and I like playing about with them. But I wouldn't call myself a keyboard player. They're great fun to play with, but they're, they're a bit complex. It's like working those, you know, micro computer things. You know, it's like going back to school to learn how to play the thing. So you've got to have a, a basic understanding of it. This one's great. This, this is my favourite, this thing. What is this called, this one? It's, um, it's a German synthesizer. It's a PPG. Uh, I don't, don't ask me what that stands for. It's um, it's a digital synthesizer, and you get this lovely thing here with it as well. What does that do? Um, well, it actually records sound, uh, so you can you know uh, put anything into it. It stores the sound on floppy disks, and then analyzes that sound and plays it back on a keyboard. So I mean, what I've got in here just now is me um, singing, going ah, uh, uh, perfect pitch. Yeah? Uh, so you can actually do a harmony, I suppose, you know, uh, <laughs> sing with your keyboard. And you can do all sorts of bit, bits and pieces, you could put that on a sequence, like, it's like a, a choir of gnomes singing. There's a whole some, album there, isn't there? Train. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, that was me. What's this one? Yes, we've been waiting all day. This one's noisy, yeah. this one. It's, um, this is like uh, Billy, our main keyboard player. This is his solo synth. So he does all sorts of, you know. A bit of an Ultravox trademark, that. It is a bit that type of sound, yeah. Well, it, it, it doesn't matter what synthesizer Billy uses. They all, they all sound like Billy's played them. You know, that sound is a, a real Ultravox sound. How, how many do you take on the road, actually, Mitch? Uh, on this tour, um, because the stuff's getting pretty complicated now, uh, we've, we've got another couple of guys helping us out, so there's even more keyboards. There must be about 18 or 19 keyboards on stage, which is, is annoying because if we did use a tape, you could probably scrap most of them, you know, and just mine, uh, <laughs> like everyone else. But, but, I mean, taking sort of 20 keyboards on the road with you is uh, painful, believe me, it's painful. They tend to break down a lot. Now, what about this one, Mitch? Uh, this one's, this one's uh, sort of bottom of the range price-wise. But uh, quality-wise, it's nearer the top. It's, uh, it's the latest thing from, uh, from the, the, the Japanese uh, company. <coughs> It'll remain nameless. Of course. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's a great thing. It's a digital synthesizer, but it's got 64 memories in it. Um, and you can put cartridges in here that have another 64 memories. So you can you know, update all your sounds, and you change the sounds that's in it, and put them into your own cartridge. And you can do anything you like with it. This sound. It's got great things. It's like uh, being Japanese, of course, you get kotos in it, you know. Very nice. And of course, you, you, can, you can literally bend the notes of these you guys, can do, don't you? Yeah, you can do anything. It's touch sensitive as well. I mean, the koto. Uh... Yeah, Whereas, you know, five years ago, synthesizers were still fairly basic and you couldn't put any expression into, into the playing at all. But this is great. I mean, steel drums. Mm. It's great. Tubular bells. Got the backdrop. <laughs> Where does it all end, Mitch? I mean, uh, there. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to Vienna, I mean that that really that really kind of lodged you in the in the minds of of the, the visual populace. Yeah. I mean, that, it was a classic, wasn't it? Uh, it is a bit, yeah. It um, it was the first one to, to actually look like a movie. I mean, it, the idea was to make it look like a four-minute movie, as opposed to a sort of glossy video. You know, we uh, and I, I say that uh, because we, we always do everything on 16 millimeter film, which gives us a quality that we like. I mean, this is done in 16 millimeter, only the best, you know. This is 16 millimeter. So uh, we, we, that's, that's what set it off. I mean, the idea of like the, the black and white imagery and making it look slightly old fashioned, but quite modern at the same time. And that did, that did sort of stand out at the time. I mean, it's now five years old. Is that your favorite Ultravox video? Uh, yeah, probably, probably one of the favorites. I mean, there's, there's good bits and bad bits in each video we do. Uh, one, of the, one of my all time faves was uh, uh, The Thin Wall. 
which was uh, just a series of really bizarre images. Oh, with the hands, the coming, hands coming through the wall. Yeah, pretty, yeah. Uh, pretty scary, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, it was a bit, yeah. It didn't get shown, I don't think. No? Frightened, frightened the kids. Really? Frightened me. These are all your ideas, the videos. Yeah, yeah. We sit, um, we sit down and, and storyboard all the ideas, uh, Chris and I, and we, we've now moved on to directing the videos as well. So it's, uh, it's just an area that we, we find interesting. The new single, uh, now it's all about a four-minute warning. Yeah, the, the, well, yeah, sort of. No, and it's a happy little ditty from the Ultra Ball. <laughs> you know, uh, it's just the, the songs basically about um, you know, the, the last things you do given you know a set time left you know like four minutes or or whatever and uh, it's quite it's quite basic but tasteful it's a love story